So a lot of people ask me what it's like to live in a semi-truck, and I'll talk about that in this video. Living in a semi-truck for me, no, no. I'm single, I don't have any kids. I help, I help out my mother and my little sister. I actually help take care of them financially due to the situation that I'm in, being that I have more disposable income. And for me, that's that was the biggest catch to living in a truck, was 100% financial. The whole like van life thing, I thought about doing it when I was struggling, living in Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, I moved down there from my home, the Bay Area, and where it's supposed to be cheaper, I found myself struggling. Found myself struggling, I was making good money, doing what I was doing, but the bills, the bills and just life was just beating me down every, every week, every day, honestly. I had this thought in my head, like, man, what if I just, you know, bought like a camper and towed it with a truck and lived, you know, just outside of town at the rest area over by Prim off of the, the highway? Or what if I lived at a truck stop out of a van with a bed in it? And then I started thinking, well, better than that, why don't I just get my CDL and live out of a truck? work for a trucking company for a few years and live out of a truck. And that's exactly what I'm doing now. I'm living out of a truck. Living out of a truck has given me, like I said, disposable income. What I've learned off of living in a truck for a total of about just short of two years now is for me, it's stress-free compared to a lot of people that I see. When I look at other people, who make more money than me, but are stressing 10 times worse than I am. And I might have actually more saved up than them making half of what they make because I don't have a five bedroom house. I don't have, I don't have, I don't have a Mercedes. Something else that I wanted to add in as I was editing this, I don't have a fancy car. I don't, I don't have a fancy apartment. I wear nice clothes, but what trucking has done for, you know, just my thoughts is when I'm on the highway, especially when I'm in LA or something, but even wherever, and I see on the highway a Mercedes, a Mustang, right? I think to myself, does this person really have the money to afford that? Or is that about to get repoed? And yeah, they have a nice Mustang, but do they have a lot invested in their Roth IRA? Do they have a lot invested in their 401k? Do they own stocks? Do they have other investments? Are they into real estate? Or is it just a nice car? Because one thing in America that is very true is a lot of people play keeping up with the Joneses. Trucking has taught me how to get wealthy, actual wealthy, to go after that. Because in order to get wealthy in America is you need to control your cash flow if you want to go into the top 1% from the middle class, it's all about controlling your cash flow and investing the cash. And when I see people driving these fancy cars, I think, hmm, I just wonder what their situation is because I've had nice cars before and they were just a money pit. I don't have a, a Toyota Camry. I don't have a car note. I don't have, I don't have to pay a PG&E bill, an electric bill, on this five bedroom house, this four, three bedroom house, plus the mortgage, plus whatever else. I don't have to worry about coughing up property taxes. I don't have to worry about a lot. I don't have to worry about a lot. What trucking has taught me in the past, like I said, just short of two years that I've been living in this truck, in this assigned truck right here, is that most people say they want to be rich. They say they want all this money. They want to live in the Beverly Hills and have a Lamborghini and a mansion and yada, yada, private jets. Most of the people that say that say that because their day-to-day -day life is a struggle. And they look at people on the opposite side of the spectrum, like Kim Kardashian or whoever, and they look at their life and they think, man, if I could just have one day in their shoes... And they go off on these tangents talking about how they wish they were rich when in reality, they just wish that they didn't have to struggle the way that they're struggling. They wish that they didn't have to worry about how am I going to pay the rent? 
How am I going to keep the lights on? How am I going to feed my kids? How am I going to get gas in my car? I need to drop $5,000 to fix this transmission or my blown head gasket. Or I need to get a tune-up at the drop of a hat and I don't have no more warranty on my car, but I'm still making car payments on it. And I can't refinance this car or I can't trade it in because it has too many miles and I haven't paid into it enough to trade it in. People are stuck and they're stressed out. And I feel like, honestly, yeah, I know I'm still in the rat race, but I kind of feel like I escaped it at the same time because I don't have to worry about paying rent to my landlord at the first of the month. I don't have to worry about making my mortgage payment on time. I don't have to worry about the lights going off in my house, which I did uh, at one point. I don't have to worry about my car just broke. This is my car. This is my car. And my company, you know, takes care of all that. And I don't, I don't swipe my car to use gas. This is a free ride. This is a free place to live. Not to mention, yeah, as truckers, we make decent money. Even if you're on the low end with a mega carrier, if you could pocket that whole paycheck, that's what most people wish that they can do. But they just can't. And not to mention, I have money to go and do things like stay at the beach for a weekend in a very beautiful, nice hotel and go out to eat in amazing restaurants with good food. I can I can go into a mall and buy just about not anything I want. I can't spend like $10,000 on a pair of shoes or something, but I could spend $1,000 on a pair of shoes. You know, I can go to the Apple store and buy me and my mom Apple watches. I bought her an iPhone because she didn't, you know, she had a janky phone that needed to be upgraded. Um, I can buy people Christmas presents now. I can call my parents and ask them if they need help financially. I can do that now. That feels really good. That feels really good. A lot of people wish that they can do that and I can do that. I don't always make it home but it doesn't matter to me. I'm close enough, I'm in my state, and it works. Living in a truck is not easy. It's not for everyone. I'd say this lifestyle, this line of work is really for single people. Now, if you're gonna work for Pepsi, Coca-Cola, maybe even a company like US Foods, where you go in and clock in, you get paid by the hour, and you're unloading boxes or pallets and you go home at the same time, you have a very set schedule, Monday through Friday, then it could be for someone with the family. But if you're gonna do the type of trucking that I do, even in your own state, don't expect to go home all the time. I tried to go home this past, my past two days off and I had to do it right here in town because they didn't have a load going up there because of the way I was scheduled. I can get, I can ask them a day ahead of time and I can usually go wherever I want to go but if I'm asking them the same day it's like a roll of the dice that I get to go where I want to go for my two days off sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't more often than not it works so if you have kids and you need to be home all the time you need to be home every day and you have to go home every night most trucking companies are not going to work out for you but living in a truck, it's, it's tight. It's a small space. I'll give you a little tour right now. This is my bed, but I also use it as a couch, right? Clothes are up there. It's folded, just kind of scattered, right? Food in here. This is just like, I keep some creatine belts, just mundane things. More food in here. Um, Spilt some protein powder. Still haven't cleaned it up. You get like a little cutting board right here or a desk, whatever you want to use it as. Subwoofer. Sound bar. The cockpit. Okay. You get little storage space up here. Um, got more stuff in here and here. And that's it. Microwave. That's pretty much what I use for food most of the time. So you eat a lot of canned foods and things that can go in the microwave or things that you can heat up with hot water at the truck stop. Another good thing about 
trucking is the fact that during the summer is when it gets really good. You can make a lot of money in the summer. You could run harder in the summer because the weather is good for it. You can't make a lot of money like that in the winter because they shut down highways, weather, you got to drive slower. But not to mention in the summer, what I mean by it gets really good is on my account, I can take a trip from Bakersfield, California to Oxnard, Santa Maria, Lompoc, San Luis Obispo, somewhere on the coast, Paso Robles. And once I'm done with that trip, I can drop my trailer at the store that I delivered to. I could park the trailer there and I could bobtail down to Santa Barbara and go stay at one of those fancy hotels right there on the beach for my two days off. I can do that. I can go out to Las Vegas. I could take a load out there, drop the trailer off at a store that I delivered to out there and bobtail to a hotel for my two days off. If I wanna go see family, I can take a load up to wherever they are, drop the trailer, go see them for my two days off or one day off if they start to piss me off and I can get back in my truck and go. Get back in my, in my domicile and just leave. That's what trucking has done for me. That's what it's like to live in a semi truck. It's think of van life, but with a job, with a good job that also comes with dental insurance, health care and vision. That's what it's like to live in a truck. It's pretty much like van life on steroids with a big company backing you. You're not out there by yourself or relying on donations from subscribers or whatever. Or I'm sure a lot of people who do van life have remote work. But I pretty much, it's pretty much what we have is remote work. That's what it's like to live out of a truck. If trucking is something you want to get into, look into it. If you're young right now and you can't get a CDL, do not mess up your driving record. That way, when you're old enough to get a CDL, you can do it. Because I, I do believe that this is one of the best lines of work that you can get into. So that's what it's like to live in a truck. Like this video. Subscribe. Peace out. Thank you for watching.